Hey there, BookTube. Noah. Everyone who reads It Must Converse is the channel. Thanks for coming by again. Uh, today I had the idea of sharing just rare, signed, and first editions of rare first editions, things like that, that are on my shelf. Because I don't think I've ever really kind of focused on that. I'm not ne necessarily a book collector. I'm a book reader. But over the years and and everything. I mean, I have over 1,300 books at my house, and I've become a collector just by virtue of gaining, you know, of, of acquiring books over my lifetime, I've become a collector, and I have a lot of stuff. I'm going to miss stuff. I grabbed out a lot of things to show, but I'm sure that there's a lot that I've missed. I have so many first editions, you know, I have first editions, or first American editions of Umberto Eco's Name of the Rose and Folk Alt's Pendulum, things like that. I didn't grab that stuff out. Um, I, I, I went for the most rare um, first editions, signed things, and um, otherwise just rare books, right? So let's get to it. Some honorable mentions here is a first edition Flannery O'Connor's The Habit of Being. This is uh, collected uh, writings, just letters of uh, Flannery O'Connor to others. Her agent, other writers, there's letters. That's how I found out about, about who uh, John Hawkes was as a writer, was from Flannery O'Connor's letters to Hawkes. And... Um, it's very cool. That is a first edition, but it is a, a posthumously published, uh, you know, collection of her letters. Very cool to have, that's for sure. I have the cover of the first edition, Italo Calvino's Invisible Cities right there, but that is a, the, uh, the paperback edition. And so I just put them up there because they make me happy. <laughs> All right, so let's get to it. I'm going to try to go fast because, like I said, there's a there's quite a bit to get to. We'll see how it goes. So, first off, I wanted to show some things that, you know, might be cool to some people, might not. It just depends on who what you like. I happened upon a first edition of this binding of Why the Last Man Safe Word. I have the whole collection of uh, Why the Last Man is a graphic novel that is completely awesome. But I had bought them on eBay, uh, at least the bulk of them. I bought them on eBay. And this one came, and it is signed by Brian K. Vaughn. Brian K. Vaughn has gone on to more and more success as a graphic novelist. And this is a really, really cool story. I think that the literary gladiators actually... At least a few of the literary gladiators are going through the Why the Last Man right now. I got, uh, just uh, by chance, a copy of Ray Bradbury's Zen and the Art of Writing, an autographed copy. So, there is Ray Bradbury with his um, book on writing right there. And it's pretty cool to have. I had gotten a hold of this, is very cool. This is Robert Silverberg's The Feast of Dionysus. The Feast of Saint Dionysus. This is a collection of stories by Robert Silverberg. A very cool first edition that is signed. So, there you go. Um, Tom at LA Books. You can feast your heart. <laughs> feast your heart out on that one. But yeah, there's my first edition signed Robert Silverberg um, stories. And just for good measure, a book that is very, very dear to me because of how, um, how, how much of an impact it had on me as an early reader is my first edition Robert Silverberg Thorns. This is a really, really cool book, very prescient. So, since, it's, since it is a first edition, I figured I would show it along with my signed uh, Silverberg, right? I have another book that was very impactful for me as a young reader, and that is Michael Crichton's Sphere. 
I was able to get my hands on a first edition hardcover of Sphere. This is a really, really cool book. I've never seen the movie. So I don't know if the movie holds up. I don't know if the movie changes anything or whatever. This book is <laughs> very, very good. And, and, and will blow your mind. Another, as far as the sci-fi is concerned, and will probably be the last sci-fi of the, of the stack, is God Emperor of Dune, Frank Herbert. I have a first edition hardcover of God Emperor of Dune. I actually have a first edition hardcover of Heretics of Dune and Chapter House Dune as well, but God Emperor of Dune is my favorite. So I just grabbed that one out to show. Um, one book that I did a new, uh, a new author, a new book, a new within the last few years, right? Couple years is that I did a review of on my channel and I was lucky enough to, um, have the author, uh, send me a signed copy of his book is George Solace, See Above, Sun Below. This is an amazing debut novel. Very, very, um, you know, mythological mixed with your, your real world. This is kind of a, ma it's, it's a magical realism is what it is. And it is totally interesting and intriguing. And you will be, um, glad that you read it. See above some below. And I have, um, George Solace there writing me a little note. And uh, thank you very much for that, brother. It was very cool to uh, to uh, read that book. I'll uh, put the link in, in the description box for that one. Um, one of my prized possessions, and a lot of these that I'm going to get to now are going to be very highly prized for me. Things that I just love. But perhaps the number one is my first edition Flannery O'Connor's The Violent Bear It Away. I showed it on my very first um, video on my channel. When I was talking about favorite authors, I did a favorite authors tag was my first video. And I um, showed this book. It is an amazing thing to have a first edition of... Uh, the Violent Barrett Away. I just, um, I love this book. I love it, and I love to have that. Another one that's great to have that is a first edition hardcover is Borges, Jorge Luis Borges, Book of Sand. I came across this in a used bookstore and just picked it up, and it is um, an amazing thing to have. At least a first American edition, right? Borges wrote in Spanish. So it's not a true first edition as far as the first time that his work was published. But it is the first time that it was published in English. So that's the best I'm going to get, right? <laughs> <coughs> Sorry about that. So um, I love this next book. And I had uh, got it and read it. I think I gave it to a friend and never gave it back. So then I finally ordered it again. And when I ordered the new copy, a second copy of it, it came signed. And so this is just a wonderful find right here. This is Mr. Either Or by Aaron Puchignan. Um, Aaron, Aaron Puchignan is a, was a maybe still is, a professor at Columbia University, if I'm uh, not mistaken. And this book is a novel in verse. So it is completely, there's a rhyme scheme that goes throughout this novel. And there's his signature there. There's a rhyme scheme that goes throughout this novel, which makes it very fast-paced. It is a fantasy, and it is a sci-fi. It is, it is wild what this book does. But this book is also in um, second person. So, it's 
you do this, you do that, you are Mr. Either or, you are uh, the m protagonist in this book. So it's even more fast paced. This is like a choose your own adventure story. That's what it feels like. That you're reading a choose your own adventure that you don't have to take any time to choose. You just keep going. It is um, completely mind blowing. And it's very cool to have a uh, assigned copy. Just just by chance, right? So, uh, Desant Books just recently put out uh, Joseph McElroy's Women and Men in a new hardcover edition. It, it was out of print for a long time. And I had let my mother know that it was uh, coming out and get it. Uh, and she got it for me for Christmas. So, here we have... Women and Men by Joseph McElroy, both Volume 1 and Volume 2. Uh, it is one book. They published it in two volumes because it is a big boy, right? Very, very big. But, along with being a hardcover and a new edition, it is signed by the author. So, let's see if I can... Did I grab Volume 2? No, there's Volume 1. All right, and... Signed by Joseph McElroy. Joseph McElroy is a living author. I mean, he's still alive. I, I don't know why his stuff is out of print and so hard to get. But thank you uh, for that one, Mama. She's, uh, she's the mastermind behind my acquiring that one. And then I'll just go ahead because I love William Gaddis. You know it. Before we get to the finale... There's definitely some awesome stuff to come up, but I will show my Gaddis uh, JR paperback, first edition paperback from Knopf, and then I have the first edition hardcovers of Carpenter's Gothic and a frolic of his own. They, uh, they will be my next, uh, a frolic of his own will be my next read. From Gaddis, and then Carpenter's Gothic will be after that. But in between there, I'm probably going to read uh, his collections, collection of essays called The Rush for Second Place. Very, very cool. All right, so we're on to the final stack, and I hope you guys enjoy this. Thank you for uh, sticking with me if you're still around, right? One thing that is very uh, hard to come by nowadays that I read when it back in the day and it blew my mind and so I wanted to get the same um, edition the first edition because now the new editions that you're gonna find of this book are uh, altered and there's a lot of redacted text so this is Behold a Pale Horse by William Cooper this was like the first kind of uh, attempt to synthesize conspiracy theory. Um, it is mind-blowing. It is wild. And it will... <laughs> it'll, it'll, it'll throw you out there on another level. Of course, uh, what, what you got to go for if you want the first edition of this book is a library copy, right? You have to get a library copy because... All the others are, uh, are already in somebody's library, you know, is what it comes down to. A new author that I just got turned on to this year that I have a signed copy of his book is America and the Cult of the Cactus Boots of Diagnostic. This is Philip Friedenberg and Jeff Walton as the illustrator. Very, very awesome. This is a brand new book, so just on the list because it's signed and I would not be surprised if this thing just blows up because it is an extremely powerful work. It is something that is going to stand the test of time. In that same breath, because we're talking about Corona Samas Press out of Slovenia, I have many books that are from Rick Harsh, the author, amazing author, and chief editor of Chronosamas.press. And I have a copy 
of the manifold destiny of Eddie Vegas here that has actually been signed in Rick Harsh's blood. <laughs> so, uh, you know, that's how it, when, it, when it works out, it works out. <laughs> he said he was going to sign, uh, you know, sign a book and send it out. And he had just cut himself right then. And that is just how it happens, you know. So, this is a very, the next one is a very special book to me. I have a dust jacket on it because I actually got a new copy. There is a press uh, that has new copies of this book. But I got the first edition printing of this book. It is, it is, it is very, very special to me. This book will blow your mind. And what I'm talking about is Science of Love with the Key to Immortality by Ida Mingle. This book um, is part of what will be called Unity Church or the New Thought Movement in America. That was maybe 30s and 40s United States. The New Thought Movement and the Unity Church, one of the main uh, most well-known figures in that movement is uh, William Fillmore. I'm not necessarily uh, well-known of his writings, but I do have some. The, the New Thought Movement writers that I love the most that really drive it home are Ida Mingle and Neville Goddard. Um, but also, from across the pond, uh, Thomas Troward. So, uh, this first edition of this is very, very special to me. And it is, a, it is an old book. I, I believe this was put out in 1927. If I'm not wrong, I might, I might be wrong, but just, it's been so long since I looked at this copy, because like I said, I got a new copy of this and you can see this is the first edition right there. I got a new copy, a newly printed copy of this. And therefore I, I, I read that and I touch that one. You know what I mean? I don't, I don't have any need to go, um, and pick up this copy so there we go um we're here at the end so this the fourth to last book is my rosa uh library a m o r c edition of the mystical life of jesus by uh h spencer lewis this is a very very interesting book very very interesting book and I'm glad that I got, uh, you know, the first edition uh, of the AMORC -A -A publication. But I don't know if there's even any other editions of this book. Uh, maybe there's, maybe there are further editions because this is a press that, you know, kind of put them out as, as they were wanted. But this thing is uh, super interesting. The... Um, kind of hidden life of Jesus being an Essene. That Jesus was an Essene, part of the Essene Brotherhood. And the Joseph and Mary were Essenes. And that everybody knew uh, Jesus and, and what Jesus was. It was ordained. It was, it was prophesied, you know. And so there is, there's not any... There's not any lost years of Jesus' life growing up. These kind of things are, uh, in, in that book, they are expounded upon. Very, very cool stuff. The next one that I'm going to show is one of my favorites of all time. This is such a strange book. Ralph E. Vaughn is the writer. And what this is, is a book called Cosmic Sense One. I've shown it on Instagram, and I might have shown it on the channel once before, 
but this is Cosmic Sense One, a revisioning and remembering of the fragments of love's body. This is a very Joycean wordplay kind of book that uses, I mean, it draws from everything. There's a whole list of books at the, at the beginning that are kind of, uh, be, are informing the text and you know, e e everything from Tom Robbins to James Baldwin to, uh, Lewis Carroll, Gertrude Stein. It's, you know, William Blake. It's, it's ridiculous. It's just, it's just an amazing amount of stuff. But what this book is, is basically this guy, Ralph K. Vaughn, using words to create his own mandalas. And what these mandalas do is show, you know, everything about some, some aspect of being, some aspect of his being. And he is he has created these mandalas and showing you how to um, work through mind science in a way that is that is completely unbelievable. It is it is a mind blowing work and I've never ever seen it again in any kind of way. There's a lot of text and it is very, very interesting. And there's a lot of mandalas, these kind of word mandalas, you know, this kind of thing is, is, you know, I'm, I'm in a section of word mandalas here. They're very interesting, but the text here is something that just blows your mind. So I don't, I don't know of anybody that knows of this book. I'd have never seen it again. So, um, it's one of my, uh, prized possessions for sure. Two more books left. I have, um, the first ever, uh, line by line commentary on William Blake's Jerusalem. This is by Joseph Wicksteed. This is put out by the Trianon Press and it is a first edition, maybe the only edition, uh, that was ever done of this a book. It has an awesome Blake frontispiece. This is put out and put up, was put out for the uh, William Blake Trust in London. The Trianon Press is the press was maybe maybe not anymore, but was the press of the William Blake Trust and. I was very, very happy to come upon this first line-by-line -line commentary and exploration of William Blake's Jerusalem. Jerusalem is an amazing 100-plate um, epic poem by William Blake. If you don't know, you owe it to yourself to check it out, that's for sure. And then the last thing I'm going to show, just because it is so epic and awesome is my copy of the complete graphic works of William Blake by David Bid Bindman. Bam. Look at this giant thing right here. This has almost 200 plates. Almost 200. It goes through all of William Blake's books are in here. There's some from the Book of Urizen. There is uh, the Song of Innocence's Experience, those kind of things. Of course, all of his own illuminated works, but also uh, the, illum the, the, the illustrations he did for things like Young's Night Thoughts and Gray's um, The Grave. He was commissioned to illustrate these books for other people. So those are in here. Um, arguably, this is not the greatest because it is black and white. But 
in this binding, which is a, a beast, you know, I have every graphic work that William Blake ever did. That means every painting, every plate that he ever did. Even even his his uh, doodles on things like uh, th there's there's different um, manuscripts and journals that that he had. This thing is heavy. <laughs> so there we go. I hope you enjoyed this book too. Let me know if you liked any things specifically. And if you want to see a, a video on anything that I show, uh, just drop me a comment and I'll catch you on the next one. Thank you. Bye-bye.